look out for Vicky Bannon, she'll arrive soon ish. Hello, welcome along to the live stream. It's Farnham Town against Red Hill, a big Tuesday night league stream for you on YouTube. Farnham obviously closing in on the Combined Counties Premier South title. And Red Hill are very much in the box seat in the race for the playoffs. Farnham got back to winning ways on Saturday, beating Croydon here by four goals to nil after a disappointing in the end point against Nap Hill. But Harry, wasn't it great to see a vintage Farnham display on Saturday? Yeah, it was. It really was a vintage Farnham display. It felt like really watching something from sort of September, October. I know that's probably before your Farnham time, but we uh, we were electric at the start of the season and we really dropped off just after Christmas, really, that Christmas break. I mean, results-wise, we were still impeccable, but from a performance level, we just weren't there. We weren't either taking our chances or we weren't creating chances in the most recent weeks. But for, for me, Saturday was uh, was a real breath of fresh air back into the team. Some strikers got in on, getting on the score sheet and uh, us bossing it from minute one to minute 90. And Paul Johnson, maybe has kind of stumbled across what might be sort of the winning formula from an attacking perspective now with this front six kind of a combination of injuries and players being out of form and we'll see the same front six tonight with Cooksley playing uh, alongside Dean Rawlin behind Owen Dean and Lewis Flatman. Yeah it's exactly the same front six um, and you wouldn't expect anything different based on the performance on Saturday. I thought Flatty was excellent, ran the line brilliantly held the ball up, he's good in the air and obviously scored that wonder goal and then oh, don't need to talk about how good Owen Dean was because that hat-trick speaks for itself. It was a proper striker's hat-trick, two tap-ins uh, where he worked hard to get into position and, and a penalty which was you know, less said about the, uh, the strike on that one the better but a hat-trick nonetheless, one that was deserved, uh, only a second hat-trick for the club after a brilliant hat-trick in, uh, in the cup final at the back end of last season. But yeah, it was it was really good. But all round, it was brilliant, right? Cooksey in that ten roll was was brilliant. I uh, thought Dean Rule was probably one of the most underrated performances in, of of the game. Didn't get his goal. We talked about it in our new series that we launched today, Farnham Reacts, uh, with Daryl Sanders and, and Joe Jackson. We talked about how Dean probably would have come off a bit disappointed not to get onto the score sheet. Had a few really good chances, but I thought. Uh, as his performance uh, said over the course of 90, he was he was really, really good. And it was also really good to see uh, Lamar Caroma come back into the side and you know be as destructive as he was <clears throat> at breaking down the, the Croydon attacks. Uh, and Joe Jackson at centre-back, I thought it was excellent too. Speaking of Joe Jackson, he plays again tonight. Jack Dean's first game of his suspension and Max Meaton's also back. How are they going to line up, do you think, that back four? Um, it will be, it'll be Max Meaton at right back. Uh, <laughs> Interesting thing there is that the threat, <clears throat> the threat for Red Hill is uh, Tyree Sutherland, who wear the number nine tonight. Uh, we watched him play left wing when we were away at, uh, at Red Hill, and he was really, really good for five minutes. He, he looked really dangerous, and then uh, Max really just locked him down. And the, the thinking tonight is if Tyrese plays on the left hand side, Max will Max will do him again. Um, and if if he doesn't, if he ends up playing down the down the middle, because uh, Red Hills normal number nine Ali Dasanj is uh, isn't here tonight uh, he may play down the middle and then we might see Max move into that central role and Joe Jackson take the right back position but really t tonight it's it's two forced changes in defense which has been the story of our season we've had so many um, so many situations this season where we've had injuries suspensions and mainly uh, in, in the fullback areas and it's exactly the same tonight Brandon Kalu who I thought was excellent again on Saturday. Um, won the penalty that we ended up missing, but he he misses out due to a hamstring injury that he's uh, that he's he's got back after being injured in at Epsom. Hello and welcome along to this coverage of Farnham Town versus Red Hill and at the top of the table clash in the combined counties Premier South. Lining up for Farnham tonight is in goal Pat Nash. In defence, Max Meaton returns alongside Joe Jackson, Ryan Kinane and Tom Smith, who comes in for the injured Brandon Kalu. Mark Waters partners Lamar Caroma in midfield and Harry Cooksley and Dean Rule are in behind Saturday's hat-trick hero Owen Dean and Lewis Flatman. On the bench it's Charlie Postance, Shamal Edwards, Adam Liddell and Kai Tanner back from suspension. Yeah, as I was saying just before, just before that, uh, two forced changes at the back. Um, Joe, uh, who was it? Jack Dean obviously facing a suspension, so Max comes back in after being in Edinburgh over the over the weekend, and then uh, left back Brandon misses out due to injury, and Tom Smith comes in. So they're the only two changes from the excellent result on the weekend. 
but it, hopefully going to see a very similar performance from the boys in Claret and Blue tonight. And hopefully we've got some Red Hill fans tuning in for this stream. Glad we'll be able to bring it to you and we'll give you their lineup now as well. It's Luke Wynn Roberts in goal and then it's Ben Dyson, Owen Fraser, Tommy Smith, Reuben Duncan, Ethan Ford, Jack Saunders, Tyree Sutherland, Peter Wedgeworth, Nathan Hogan and Jack Poplett. On the bench it's Paddy Harlan Goddard, Sam Orisotoki, Gavin Quintine, Alex Keating and Adam Grant. Little fun fact for you about a player playing for Red Hill. Nathan Hogan uh, did a week as an intern at my business, the Gate Agency, and I was told that this morning by uh, Michael, who you can currently hear on the Tannoy, who employed him. But, yeah, excited for, excited for tonight. Um, they're a good side, Red Hill. They're, they're four for a reason. They, they've been very, very good this season. Probably been a bit too up and down for, for their liking, but good manager in Jordan and uh, they do have some really good players but yeah it's their form that has been questionable really over the course of the season they really just haven't been able to build a run of games and a run of wins um, and it's been bitty and tonight they obviously missed their striker got a few makeshift <coughs> players in different positions uh, and they'll play in yellow and blue tonight and hopefully they don't play like brazil <laughs> yeah hopefully more talky united <laughs> <laughs> excellent 181 of you joining us this evening online. Thank you very much for doing so. Please drop a subscribe if you can. Farnham Town looking to go within four points of the title tonight if they get a win. And they'll be kicking towards the clock end second half, which will please them. It's where we saw Owen Dean get his hat trick goal on Saturday. But uh, it's uh, Red Hill to get us underway. Big night for them. They need to pick up points. As Kinane heads back to Pat Nash, but Red Hill have got the points on the board in fourth place, but there's teams chasing behind that have played fewer games. There are Croydon uh, and Tadley. Tadley play tonight. I'm surprised Croydon don't, to be honest, given the games, but Tadley play tonight. Uh, they are also a team that Farnham Town need to drop points this week in order to be able to win it in Jersey, so we will keep you up to date with that too. Yeah, we'll run you through those exact permutations as well. But for now, Farnham have a free kick. In the, in the Red Hill half, as the referee explains to Mike Waters why he let that one go until he did eventually blow the whistle. I've never seen this red before, he's got a lovely haircut. Yeah, lovely looks, haircut. Looks like he could have been in one of the bands we were playing on the Tano before kickoff. Absolutely, yeah, sort of bass guitar, I think. Harry Cooksley standing over the free kick. He's enjoying this advanced role. Very versatile midfielder for Farnham. Flatman. He scored from this sort of range on Saturday and he was looking to come up with similar heroics there, but that was never troubling when Robertson goal. Um, a goalkeeper who had a brilliant, brilliant performance against us uh, away from home, Win Roberts. Probably one of the best goalkeepers we've faced in the league uh, and kept that score to, to only two when we, when we faced him in a very, very cold January evening uh, earlier this season. Yeah, and it took the goal of the season, or certainly a contender for goal of the season from Daryl Sanders to beat him. To break with deadlock that night. That was a fantastic, fantastic goal. Yeah, a goal that was shown on ITV News, no less. Tom Smith back in the side. A lot of rotation in defence this season for Farnham. Much of it enforced. Dean Rule. Throwing goes Red Hill's way. He took a he took a tumble there, looking for the free kick. The Red Hill player. One thing that would have disappointed Red Hill in the reverse fixture was the lack of chances created, especially in that second half against Farnham. But they did make it difficult. Yeah, I think they're, you know, they're off the back of a very poor result in losing away at Shearwater. No disrespect to Shearwater, but there's a there's a there's a gulf in in quality between the team teams. Let's be honest, and um, it's a disappointing result. Owen Dean looked for the flick on there. Went over. And now Max Meaton, who's been playing at centre back a lot in recent weeks, and I think he's acquitted himself very well, but he's at right back tonight. I'm trying to figure out what they're doing here, Red Hill. They don't seem to be playing a left winger. Looks like it's five at the back, with seven being uh, like a left wing back. Do you agree? Yeah, it does seem that way. Here's Joe Jackson. 
And now Meaton. Mark Waters dropping in. The mid-season signing from Kingstonian. Meaton took a bit too long there, and here is Hogan for Red Hill. Joe Jackson did well, but his clearance is only as far as Fraser. Yeah, there's, there's clearly going to be a game plan, as, as we see with most teams that come and play Farnham for the second time this season. There's a, there's a clear game plan that the managers try to enforce. Uh, there's obviously plenty of tape that you can watch about Farnham as well. It's a useful header and a potential opportunity. The uh, pass there from Ford couldn't quite find his target. And Dean Rule is released on the left flank. He's dispossessed. And now Tom Smith looking to get forward and finally get the throw on the halfway line. Instructions from below us from Jimmy Hibbert to Max Meaton after that mistake. Move the ball faster. Not rocket science. Forward by Kinane. Instructs Flatman to hold it, but he couldn't do so because he was barged in the back there. Lewis Flatman very useful with his back to goal. Yeah, I thought he was excellent Saturday. Um, and started in the same vein, again running the channel. It's, it's wet out there though. Yeah, that one gets away from him. Farnham kick for some territory though. Just over Dean Rule's head, and uh, Waters looking to gather, not quite able to do so, and uh, they were looking to release Ford there. It's like Sutherland's actually going to be on the right-hand side. Yeah, big task for Tom Smith. Owen Dean the target for this ball forward. Red Hill deal with it. Kinane goes in strong. Dean Rule brings it down. Farnham just looking to get into their rhythm. Good intense start from Red Hill though. They've been good so far. Very clearly sticking to a task. Smith loses out and here is Sutherland. Looking to take on Kinane. Cuts inside onto his left foot and gets a shot away. It was blocked by Smith. Yeah, he did well to recover there, Tom Smith. Lost the ball. This time Dean Rule beaten to it. Pat Nash comes to claim and Joe Jackson has plenty of space ahead of him. And Max Meaton's bombed on ahead of him. But it's Joe Jackson for Farnham. All the way into the final third. It's going to come for... Meeting almost. And again, Mark Waters just slotting in and filling that space which Jackson vacated. Very experienced Farnham midfielder in that holding role. Jordan, the Red Hill manager, much more vocal than I remember him away. Yeah, Wants knows, a lot more from his players. He knows the importance of this game as well. Yeah. It's, it's three points, you know, lots of these playoff teams, we look at, at this as three points. Because no other playoff team other than Napier have managed to get points off Farnham. Yeah, and that point for Napier will give teams like Red Hill belief that you can get something out of this fixture. No one yet to get any points here at the Memorial Ground. No, Jersey came close. And I'm sure... Elthorne came close. I'm sure Red Hill were delighted that Farnham found the late winner in that game in a crazy few moments. Yeah, it's a weird one. We, we've got a situation where every playoff team, once they've played us, oh, they uh, came for Southern. stopped there whilst they had a, a chance. But every playoff team, once they've played us, now wants us to win because every single um, playoff team basically plays us in the next four weeks. Yeah, Jersey on Saturday included. Meaton. And now Jackson. Seeing plenty of the ball. And he drives forward again into Red Hill territory. And he looks wide for Cooksley. He was caught late there, Jackson, but Cooksley can get the cross in. And Karoma is arriving. Done well. It might come for Dean Rule now. Picks his place and the 
Goalkeeper saves with his feet. Just didn't get any power on it, did he, Dean Rule? He's won it back, though. Karoma. I'd be surprised if the referee doesn't come back and book the player against Joe Jackson. There's Joe Jackson's going to maraud forward again from centre back. No stranger to opposition territory. Obviously brought in as a midfielder. Kane. Tom Smith. That's going to come for Waters. That was a Almost risky cut out. Waters looking over the top there for Owen Dean. Fresh off his hat trick against Croydon. That's going to make a loud sound. There it is. Yeah, Max Meaton is really spending a lot of time quite high up the pitch for Fana, maybe exploiting the formation of Red Hill. No out and out winger, as Harry mentioned, to deal with. Here's Kinane. Tom Smith now bombing forward down the left, who yeah. receives the ball. Yeah, it feels like the man over so far has been Joe Jackson. Yeah, yeah that's what you're also going to get from playing a centre midfielder at centre back. You're going to get someone who can drive forward with the ball with confidence. And he's looking for Owen Dean this time, and he brings it down. It falls for Meaton, whose cross is good. Was good. Well dealt with. Farnham win it back again. Harry Cooksley was looking for Meaton there. Owen Dean, if anything, got in the way. One back by Karoma. Back in the team after dropping to the bench for a couple of games. Waters. Yes. Back to Ryan Kane. Farnham have been excellent the last three or four minutes. Completely dominating the ball. Need to keep hold of it though, especially in these areas. Well done, Lewis Flatman. Again, space for Jackson to work with. Now Waters. Harry Cooksey. Caught late again, and this time the free kick is given. Maybe there was an advantage to be played. Harry Cooksey stays down. I think he's okay, spiding his time. <laughs> he's, he, he's got he's got muddy. I think is what Harry cooks. He's got there. He's got muddy. Yeah. And he's not happy about it. It's ruined his look for the evening. It is muddy down this far. It's much wetter in Farnham than than where I've I've come from today, where it's bone dry. Not sure where it was like, what it was like where you are, Ben. But when I looked out the window and then I got a call saying it's been quite wet in Farnham, I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. No, it was it was spitting a bit in Woking as well. As Harry Cooksey sizes up another set piece. In it goes. It's high, and Ryan Kinane's the target. Might come for him here, and a bit like Flatman earlier, hooked effort just over the bar. Yeah, he couldn't quite get his, you know, his knee over it. Um, not even a half chance, really. But you know, Farnham are starting to turn the screw a bit here. Yeah, Ryan Kinane was among the goals in. Farnham's away win at Camberley a couple of weeks ago. And there's uh, quite a few goal contributions this season, the captain. Yeah, he's done very well. Dean Rule tracking back. The cross does come in. Nothing for Pat Nash to worry about. Pat Nash, who was this week's guest on Game day, the podcast we've brought out in the last two weeks. First episode with Joe Jackson went down really well. Pat Nash, actually, from a numbers perspective, performing even better. So thank you very much if you watched that. But if you haven't and want to learn more about our goalkeeper, there's a podcast that you can do so. Yeah, he's a popular figure, Pat Nash. And another key piece of this Farnham puzzle. And it's Ethan Ford as Meaton lost his footing on this wet surface. And Meaton does his job very well indeed. Oh, indeed, looking to hold this one up. Both went in high, but they get on with it, and it's Dean Rule. 
the ball just ball just spun away from Rule. Yeah, Ben Dyson got there first. It is slippy out there. It is slippy. As proven by the by the, by the goalkeeper. Even I mean, Dean goes up and he's got quite a leap on him. It's going to be Farnham ball. Looked quite fortunate to get the decision there, Cooksley. Do you think? I thought. Decision I'd have given. Granted, I'm biased. <laughs> Good for Max Meaton. Ryan Canane. And that's not his best ball, but Dean Rule's going to bail him out. And very positive run now from Dean Rule, who skips past another and finds Max Meaton. Max Meaton across. And it was behind Lewis Flatman and in front of Owen Dean. Meaton did so well. Got a nosebleed in the end in the penalty area. He almost, he almost got too good a contact on it as a cross. Better off shooting. Could have just rolled it across, maybe a bit softer. But yeah, make, make the Red Hill player defend it. But he stayed forward. Intent, though. And good work by Dean Rule initially as well. Cooksley was just looking for waters, but it's cut out. It was a risky one, and now Karoma is tracking Sutherland and did enough there to put him off. And now it's Max Meaton. Waters. That's looking to find that was a poor decision. Ford, cut out by Jackson. Ford again. Good feet there. Very good work. Now it's Poplet. Wedgeworth sold Flatman there. But the pass it's gonna was force. inaccurate. Here's Owen Dean, he turns. He's got Cooksley to his left. And that's who Waters elects to find, and Tom Smith's going to provide the overlap. Tom Smith, chance to deliver. Low cross cut out by the first man in defence. Much to the frustration of everyone associated with Farnham Town. Frustration aimed from the Red Hill bench towards Sutherland on that far side. He's had a few chances with some space in front of him, but hasn't driven at the full back. Still nil nil here in a relatively uneventful first half so far. 15 minutes gone. Throwing goes short to Cooksley. Smith with another chance to cross. This time it's deeper. That could be in. Ooh. It was around this sort of time on Saturday where Farnham suddenly turned the screw. And once they get one, they look very capable of adding more and more. It's all about breaking that deadlock. And that came very late against Jersey, very late against Collier's Wood. The pitch is going to get harder and harder to play as it, as it becomes more and more cut up, as well with this wet ground. Porters won the header, as did Karoma. It's going to come now for Duncan. Looking down the line, Neaton looked like it got a touch, just going to stay and play. Neaton again hooks it away. Tom Smith will collect. Mark Waters, very good. Calming influence, Mark Waters in that midfield. Gets it there from Flatman, and he's fouled. And that will bring the first yellow card of the evening. He's walked over there with purpose, the referee. Look at him. He knows he's done something good. He's happy with that one. It was, it, I mean, it was a yellow card. Uh, it, was, it was nicely worked from Farnham down that far side. Yeah, Mark Waters again showing his experience, getting his body in the way. And Duncan is on a yellow card for the remainder of the game. Waters offside this time. It was, a, it was a good idea. It was different. Red Hill manager. <laughs> 17 <laughs> minutes in, accuses his left wing back of blowing out his ass. It's not what you want to hear, is it? <laughs> Don't worry, five subs at. Five subs at step five. He had to put an end to his day early if he needs to. Duncan's header. 
Kinane. And they want the free kick. The referee looked like he was putting his whistle to his mouth there was, for the challenge I, by I've never seen anything quite like it. Changed his mind mid motion. Meaton keeps it in. And now Flatman. Meaton again. His turn to drive forward. Just maybe waited too long. That's good though from Flatman. Yeah, Owen Dean will pick this one up. Again, Tom Smith bombing on, and that's who Karoma looks for. Cut out there by Sutherland, and it's going to roll out for a corner to Farnham. It was good. It was a good initial pass from Flatman. He got out of the danger area. It was all getting a bit frantic in this right-hand side, as it has done really a few times. Got it out into acres of space on that left-hand side, and ultimately Farnham have got a corner out of some nice, quick transitional passing. In the 20th minute, it's Harry Cooksley standing over the corner. And it's into a good area. It might drop for Owen Dean. Facing the wrong way, wasn't he? Back out to Cooksley, no He's flag. Onside. Cuts into his left foot, lost his footing momentarily, and that's going to be another corner. And Red Hill are feeling a bit aggrieved. Cooksley not wasting any time with the second corner in quick succession. And Waters was going in. Collected on the edge of the box by Karoma. And now Dean Rule. Cooksley's going to get another effort here. Another left foot across. And Karoma again. Kinane from distance. Oh! He was creeping into that near post. Good effort from Kinane, low and hard, but the goalkeeper equal to it. it was, it's the first time I've seen. A talismanic defender shoot from 35 yards. It was a really good effort. Kept it on target. Good save. Yeah, Wynn Roberts, who played well in the reverse fixture. Getting a bit of a tester there from Farnham's captain. Forward by Waters. On by Flatman. Oh, indeed, Straight towards us. Or now a car. Ooh. Not my car, thankfully. It's Paul no. Johnson's car. No, no. Farnham, quick about their business at the moment. Nice from Dean Rule. Can he yeah. go wide? He's looking for Karoma. The option's there for Tom Smith, but Karoma uses that run to cut inside and, and take a shot which clears the fence, let alone the goal. That was poor. What a great opportunity that was to get a shot on target. Did everything right, Lamar Karoma. Lent back. And yeah, it's gone over. I don't even know how high that is. I mean, it's... Oh. Less said about it, the better. Yeah, 25-foot fence, he's, he's cleared. But a good run from Tom Smith to open up the space to draw the defender. And that's been a theme of the game so far, both fullbacks getting forward at every opportunity. Yeah, and there's more and more space opening up for Farnham in this sort of attacking midfield area. Karoma's header. Flatman, who's been busy. Dean Rule. Smith looking to get forward. He's going to chase this one down. Away by nice his namesake. Away. And mine. <laughs> That's going to work. Owen Dean went in, as did Jackson. Seeing some good little battles out there. Wise. Looking to make their quality show, though. Brian Kinane assesses his options. Flatman coming deep again. Flatman, who's won the goal on Saturday, will make the end of season highlight reel, I'm sure. Owen Dean's goal is unlikely to. <laughs> but they were equally important, and here he is. And he was caught there by Wedgworth right on the edge of the box. They'll argue that the ball was gone. And the Farnham fans are surely ironically asking for a red card. It was it was mistimed from Wedgworth. Yeah, it was. It was. Not sure he can have too many complaints. I'm just about to watch it back. Just good determination from Owen Dean to get a foot on the ball. Yeah, tough, tough one. 50-50. I mean, it's just a bit late. Um, but a good shooting chance. And it will be, it looks like Lewis Flatman. He gave one to Tom Smith on Saturday and it didn't clear the wall. Lewis Flatman scored basically from this exact spot on Saturday, albeit with a bouncing ball. 
Yeah, it's him and Cooksley debating how they're going to go about this one. It's exciting. I've got no idea what's about to happen. It is Cooksley who was looking for the near post and almost deflected into the far corner. It will be a, a corner kick. I thought we were going to see a repeat of the routine we saw that scored against Red Hill away with Flatman running the dummy run and then Cooksley taking the, taking the kick. Instead, Cooksley used Flatman as a static dummy. I think if we get another situation like that, Flatman will not allow anyone else to take it. No, I think he'll pull rank. He's down the keeper play! In front of him! But it's Cooksley with the corner. And it's towards Jackson at the back post, and he got a touch on it, as did Waters. And now Dean gets a good shot off, and it's going to go out for a throw in. He caught he, it well. He caught that really well, Mark Waters, as did Owen Dean. Two good chances, final causing chaos in the Red Hill box from set pieces. Yeah, they're struggling to get out at the moment, the visitors. Farnham with this new look, front six, really, shape-wise, are absolutely camped in opposition territory, just as they were on Saturday. That one's going to go out of play, and Flatman's actually going to be penalised for a nudge there and a bit of afters. Quite a bit of afters in the yeah, honesty. Yeah, I'm not sure. Looked relatively innocuous from Flatman, but we thought that about Kai Tanner's foul here a few weeks ago, and it is a yellow card for Flatman. I think, I think if Flatman gets a yellow, I think number... Actually, the player who's been carded already, who came running over, probably Ruben likely Duncan. to get that one as well. But that's what happens. Yeah, and that will only up the ante in terms of intensity of this game. Not sure what he's given here or what they're going to do, Red Hill. Should be a foul. Yeah, it was a, it was a foul initially by Flatman. Bit of an unnecessary one. But he's given a, he's given a throw, isn't he? Uh -huh. Very, Very peculiar decision. Yes. All right. Referee seems to be making up rules as he goes along. I don't see a yellow card for Ben Dyson, but the Red Hill bench below us seem to think that's what's happened. Hmm. With the uh, Red Hill number two, but we play on anyway. Brian Kinane. He won't want this game to spill over. He's always calling for calm. Yeah, and Farnham have been really, really good for the last 15 minutes. Just uh, looking to clear their lines, but again, they don't really get it significantly away. And Mark Waters, he was fouled there, perhaps. He stayed down. Oh, in, uh, sorry, Dean Rule goes down. and He's made up for that one, ref. He knows he's got this one wrong on Mark Waters. I think it was a really bad tackle, the one on Waters. Yeah, he gets back to his feet. He was just stretching for it, Waters, and I wonder if he was caught on the shin. Here he is, going to watch it back. It's, uh, it's a nasty one. But Farnham have been given a foul, gifted it, I think. Not really sure it was a... Yeah, Dean Rule did get his body in the way of the defender. But it's a great opportunity, another set piece, a good crossing position, and Flatman has a responsibility. And he goes for goal, and he very nearly found it. What a chance. Mark Waters was in there as well. What a chance. It's a brilliant ball in from Lewis Flatman. Yeah, it was a cross-come shot, really. And Mark Waters, I wonder how he didn't score. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. He's under the crossbar, isn't he, Mark Waters? Yeah. Good chance for him to break his duck for Farnham. Waters. And now a rare opportunity for Red Hill to get forward, and they get the decision this time. And they probably feel like they've been due one. Yeah, they probably are. They probably are. Frustrating one to give away. But they're probably due one. Yeah. 
Nathan Hogan and Peter Wedgworth standing over it. Hogan, a, a, a free kick specialist. But it's Wedgworth that takes it with his left foot. Kinane got up and made it his. And now Flatman's going to look straight for Owen Dean. Better options were probably available. They were. It was probably the right idea. Owen didn't get on his bike quick enough. But for Farland to get out and get their shape back, it's probably not the worst idea ever. They've been dominant in the last 20 minutes. Another header for Kinane. He's offside, Owen Dean. Comes straight to Duncan. Saunders works it wide. Poplet, searching ball, diagonal, and it's comfortable for Pat Nash, and he looks quickly for Owen Dean. Might drop for Cooksley. Now, unfortunately, Lewis Flatman, who would have been the target. Ford. Sutherland making the run, tracked by Smith, and it's out of play. That was poor. That was poor. Yeah, I was saying that the, the target for the flick on Lewis Flatman was offside, so it was difficult to, to get the ball forward. Some true non-league instructions below me. Stop fucking about with it. Just have a shot. I like it. Owen Dean. Max Meaton's wandered into some space, but Kinane ignores him for now. Joe Jackson, who we saw drive forward a lot in the first 10 minutes or so, less so since then. Nice play between Waters and Cooksley. Farnham opening up space at will here. Tom Smith's looking to burst into it. Rather like Brandon Kalu on Saturday. Doesn't quite come off. It was the wrong decision in the end. He did so well to get the space. Just need to keep running across the player. Yeah, a bit more confidence and belief, and you might have seen him do that. Even just taking a strike, the, the surface is so slippery. You know, like we saw with Kinane's strike, it was a good save, but just getting some shots on target, Farnham could do with testing the goalkeeper, who was excellent in our away fixture. Flatman didn't get a good contact on that one. Kinane needed to there and did. It's going to come for Duncan, though. Sutherland, Smith had to be alert, but decent spell now for Red Hill. Yeah, they've grown back into the game. They've grown back into the game nicely. They've, they've ridden the storm of Farnham Town, who were utterly dominant for the for 15 minutes in that middle sector of this half so far. But they've managed to get back into it and looks like they've got a long throw. And it doesn't quite find its target. And that was a cynical foul, stopping attack. And the referee only gives a free kick, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. Again, I think he's making up for potentially past misdemeanors, because that is the most obvious yellow card I've seen in quite some time. Yes. Lewis Flatman has got a huge amount of space. If Ryan Kinane looks up, and now he's Marked. Yeah, very interesting, the uh, criteria for yellow cards and not yellow cards so far. Both sides can have complaints, you'd, you'd probably say. Yeah, I think that's fair. Owen Dean had a free header and didn't make the most of it. 50p head, Owen Dean. Uh, yeah, the referee probably uh, probably be better in his role as a bassist in a alt-rock band rather than a referee, based on his... First 32 minutes showing. But tonight, Matthew, he is a referee. Yeah, luckily, no major decisions that have gone wrong. <laughs> As you say that, he's made another absolute howler, this time in favour of Farnham Town. Yes, a lot of the small decisions, he's just not quite seemingly getting right. It's obviously easy for us to say up here. 
Max Meaton goes back to Pat Nash, who had to be careful of that one and was. Didn't Don't take work. it first time. Kanane. That was again. a poor pass from Kanane. As was that, though. Farnham couldn't quite capitalise. I'll get the throw in. Finally, to take this quickly, and they've got some space. Right in front of that new stand. Owen Dean. Throw into Farnham, which they take quickly again. Cooksley into the area. It's going to roll through to the goalkeeper, though. And nice 34 idea. minutes in, it's not been the highest quality game we've seen at the Moral Ground this season. I think the conditions are quite difficult. Um, it's skidding on a bit further than potentially players would have imagined. Um, Farnham have been good. Panash has yet to do anything, really. Red Hill probably a bit more disciplined than Croydon were on Saturday. They maybe made it easier for the hosts to uh, run away with it. Yeah, and Farnham, Farnham got that goal early, didn't they? Um, but, but ultimately, yeah, you're right. They, they've, they've come here with a much more clear game plan and it's all about the counter-attack. Yeah, and the goal is the first half in the reverse fixture. That was also a tight opening 45. Red Hill are a good outfit. There's a reason they're in the playoff hunt. Oh, absolutely. You know, there's, there's no bad teams in that playoff hunt. Um, and there's a lot of teams in the playoff hunt. Don't do it, team! Ryan Kinane. Farnham don't need to overplay. They just need to get back into the rhythm they were in about 10 minutes ago. And they'll be dictated by these boys in the middle. That's nice. Just not on the same wavelength. Sutherland looking to take on Smith, who stood his ground. Waters, back to Pat Nash. I actually prefer those more than ones that goes on the floor. You can judge the bounce a bit better. Joe Jackson. Keeping his place at centre-back, where he played on Saturday very well. Flatman again dropping deep and looking to flick it on first time, not coming off for him. Done really well. Cooksley. Didn't look, didn't look, Harry Cooksley. No, and it's cut out by Ford. Finally to work hard to get this ball back. They've done well. Looking wide for Hogan. Fraser. And now Wedgworth. Meaton with some defending to do. The keeper called for it there, Pat Nash, and Farnham escape. Yeah, got, got away with that one, really. I think the forward did well to get in behind Joe Jackson. And a better touch would have diverted it past Pat Nash. Farnham just need to regain their control on, on the game. It's, just keep the ball. Yeah, Lewis Flatman this time. Just overplaying in that middle area. Jackson, is he going to go on one of those runs again? Instead, finds Cooksley, who turns and drives forward. Now Harry Cooksley, it's opened up for him. And he shoots left-footed! What a finish that is by Harry Cooksley! And, and he goes... And break the deadlock. He goes straight over to the cameras. Harry Cooksley drives forward and then strikes the ball with his left foot as if it's his strength. But it's actually his weaker foot and it's gone bang into the bottom corner and Harry Cooksey scores his 16th goal of the season from midfield. Yeah, missed penalty on Saturday as well as a decent chance to hit the woodwork. That was a much tougher one, but it was a great turn initially to create the space for himself and a finish to match. And Farnham haven't been at their best, but they've broken the deadlock in the 38th minute. And they don't concede many, so they'll feel good about their chances of taking another step closer to the title. This is where Farnham Town need to be ruthless. Because these are the moments where Heads go down in opposition teams. Here at the Memorial Ground, it's a very tough place to come. It's an even tougher place to get a result when you go a goal down. That's a great ball. Owen Dean holding it up. And uh, 
all day long. Bit of a tangle there. Must be said that Farnham Town have yet to trail this season in the league. They, are, they have not gone a goal down at all. That is quite some stat, 28 games into the season. I can't believe I'm saying it. But what a fantastic finish that was for Harry Goodson. Yeah, the, uh, the clock end would have had a lovely view of it, actually. Probably way better than us. Looking to turn provider now, Cooksley, with an in-swinging cross. And the flag's gone up there. It's a cheap one. It's a cheap one. <laughs> Farnham are looking to repeat their two goals in quick succession, like we saw against Croydon. And I'm sure Croydon would have enjoyed it as well. I mean, that's a big goal for the playoff race. That is a big goal for the playoff race. There'll be managers watching the stream or managers in the ground who will be delighted with that goal. Sutherland's going to give Max Meaton an issue there. Nash gets it away. And lots of space for Cooksley. Oh, <laughs> Harry Cooksley! He's enjoying himself out there. And he's driving forward again. When he's in this mood, he's impossible to play against. Yeah, we've seen him do some incredible things. We've seen him pass the ball with his shoulder. I was right in front of the cameras again. He knew exactly what he was doing, Harry Cooksey, with a little Neymar touch. I've got a horrible feeling the camera has not got it. <laughs> I haven't just watched it back. JJ, JJ, why one of the skipper is gone? Oh, he's going to be furious. He's going to be furious. I've just seen the replay. You haven't seen it behind uh, from home. But what he's done, if you just Google Neymar first touch, you, you can just visualise Harry Cooksey doing it. Um, apologies, we couldn't bring it to you. But I'm sure we will have a camera angle of it over the course of the next few days. He will be devastated that it's not on this one. But if anything, it's, it's, it means that we're going to get less in the ear from him. Another set piece opportunity for him. And that is going to go beyond everybody. There, they've got a corner out of it though. Yeah, it hit his, it hit his, um, hit his legs. I, I don't know what they're complaining about. It was, it was clear. The, the, weirdly, the linesman who was looking straight at it didn't give it. I mean, I could see it. It just hit his, it hit his like, shin. And he knew he did it because he walked straight away. He, he wanted to hope, hope and pray he didn't get spotted. This time it's Flatman to deliver. And it's floated into the arms of Wynne Roberts. And he's going to look to quickly release Hogan. But Max Meaton got there. Tom Smith's going to be pressurised. But he and Karoma with the one-two, and now Smith can burst forward. Finds Cooksley. Gets an applause from the bench. Max Meaton getting forward. Cooksley. He looks on song, Harry Cooksley, out there. He's had a cookie before, I reckon. They were delicious. Lovely extra-large cookies served at the Memorial Ground this evening. Canane. Looking for Owen Dean. And he did get a touch, Dean, and he's still going. Now Cooksley. Couple of step overs. And he drives into the box and wins a penalty. And I wonder if he'll take it. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. I think Ryan Canane is the designated penalty taker now, but I'm not sure I'm going to watch him for the next three to five seconds. Does he make a move? He doesn't look like he's walking towards a spot, but no. that was Harry Cooksley, full of confidence and full of intent. I mean, he's totally unplayable. Owen Dean has the ball. He scored. Oh, God. <laughs> he scored a penalty at the clock end on Saturday to complete his hat-trick. It wasn't the cleanest strike. But it found the back of the net, which is more than can be said for Harry Cooksley's effort in the first half. So, Owen Dean. <laughs> There's calls on the clock end for We Want Nashi. I quite fancy Nashi. I think he strike it really well. But it's Owen Dean. And it's 2-0. Calm as you like. 
and he's banging form now. Farnham's number seven, and they've doubled their lead before he's, half time. He struck that one well, Owen Dean, passed it confidently into the bottom corner. Farnham Town have got their second goal just before half time, and Red Hill, I'll be honest, out there look beaten. Yeah, the one thing you mustn't do when you concede shortly before half time is concede another. And it was a naive tackle, really, on Cooksley. It was unnecessary. It was unnecessary. He just looks so confident out there, Harry Cooksey. And it was a confident penalty from Dean. Really clean, straightforward side foot into the bottom corner. And suddenly Farnham have got a bang in form striker. Which is not something we've been able to say in recent months. And he's 10 ace just as ever there, Owen Dean. Very similar to what we saw at Croydon. And Red Hill will be grateful for half time in a minute's time. Yeah, they will. The clock enters in full voice. Yeah, we could see some fun stuff in the second half, I think. Well, Red Hill are going to have nothing to lose, so it's going to completely change their game plan. Sutherland's going to chase this one down. Kinane is never unnerved in those predicaments. That was a poor pass in a dangerous area, though, from Mark Waters. Ford. Can they find a route back into the game? Red Hill. It's Duncan. Great tackle. Terry, Got a foot in. Smith. Gets it down the line. It's going to come back to him. Don't. Patmash had to take that one first time. Made no mistake. Jackson went in and won the header firmly. Flatman flicked it on. Well dealt with. Perfect contact for Flatman. But Farnham, look. Very impressive in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, the goals are flowing for the league leaders at the moment. Flatman controlled it and forgot to pick the ball up again. But here's Owen Dean. Four goals in 135 minutes for him. Made himself undroppable with a big game at Jersey to come on Saturday. Ooh. Farnham get the throw. Yeah, Farnham look confident going forward now. Playing passes with purpose. Waters. Some space for him. Still Waters. Flatman loves this sort of position. Good effort from him. Went for placement rather than power, and it's tipped wide for another Farnham corner. Yeah, it's rare to see Lewis Flatman choose placement over power, but I think it was the right decision in that instance. It was a really good save. Saw it all the way and passed it around the post. Farnham Town looking to make it three. Ten minutes ago, it was goalless and a stalemate, and suddenly the game is almost out of sight. It certainly would be if... They can add a third now from this corner, which Lewis Flatman is about to take. It's another floated delivery, and Kenane got his head on it. Waters is in there again. Sliced it. Karoma was just looking to cushion that for Owen Dean, but it's out of play, and looks like Red Hill will get to half time at just 2-0. I, I, to be clear, I don't think Red Hill have been that bad. Farnham Town, in the last 10 minutes, have been ruthless. They were fantastic for 15. Red Hill got themselves back into the game but I don't think they've been that bad. Waters. The marker Roma. Farnham want to get anything out of this. End of the second, first half, they're going to need to move the ball faster than this. That's they cool. give it away. But Dean Rule couldn't win his battle there. Flatman now chasing back. It's going to come for Ford, though. Poor from Farnham. Skips past Karoma. Sutherland has a chance. And the left-footed strike is pretty decent from Ford, and that is the last action. A Pat Nash save from Ethan Ford's effort from distance, and Farnham lead 2-0 at the break. Goals from Harry Cooksley and Owen Dean's penalty broke what was a pretty much a stalemate until then, but Farnham were always in control, Harry. Yeah, they, they, uh, they've been excellent, Farnham Town. Um, they... <laughs> They've done everything. I mean, it just feels like a continuation of that Croydon game. You know, high intensity. I think the front two have been really, really good. 
Um, I think the midfield has been excellent. They've broken up play when it's gone forward. But uh, yeah, ultimately, I think a really, really good performance that's continued on from, uh, from a solid Saturday. And we're seeing very different patterns of play from this Farnham team with Cooksey playing further forward and without Shamal Edwards, obviously, when he is on the pitch and he has been starting recently, it's very direct from Farnham, but a bit more patient with uh, Flatman and Dean up front. Yeah, you see a lot of that pass where you, uh, Ryan Kinane or uh, Joe Jackson have it at the back. Someone comes and drops short and then a, and then a forward comes and drops short into the pocket. There's a lot of space in and around that sort of centre circle that uh, centre back to forward is, is the first pass, which kind of s skips those two midfield areas and then they can pick up the second ball with a bounce pass and then we open up some space in for the fullbacks. And um, it's, it's, it's been really successful for Farnham um, in, this, in this first half. We haven't actually created a huge amount of chances. I mean, a few good saves from the, uh, from the goalkeeper, one tipping around the post right at the end from Lewis Flatman, a good save from distance uh, against Ryan Kinane. But ultimately, you know, if the best chance probably fell to Mark Waters at the back stick with a whip cross from Lewis Flatman, and he, and he didn't manage to, to put it in from underneath the crossbar. So, you know, Farnham a two 0 to the good. Um, we have two, you know, really good goals. Penalty, obviously, a good finish, but come from a good piece of play from Harry Cooksey, and uh, and it's really started to become the Harry Cooksey show with with that first goal. I mean, it was really sensational. It has become the Harry Cooksey show, and have we found his best position? I know he's obviously been an excellent deep line midfielder this season and Daryl Sanders has kind of been the man to unlock the fences but Harry Cooksley with an excellent pre-assist on Saturday for the opener and then obviously yep. a lovely assist for Flatman today that turn you know in, in Red Hill territory just created the chance out of nothing for his goal drives into the box for the penalty is he almost wasted playing further back I think Farnham have got a luxury right they've got so many good players and um, when you've got Sanders on the pitch you don't need two Sanders in the tent um, and you need someone to be able to pick the ball off the centre backs and get the ball into Sanders into the into the pockets. When you haven't got Sanders on the pitch, and for people who are watching, you know, uh, unfortunately Daryl suffered a knee injury at Epsom away, and it's not severe, um, but it will see him out probably for the rest of the season due to us not wanting to rush him back because of the fortunate position we find ourselves in the league, uh, partly down to you know his 41 goal contributions. But uh, when you've got Cooksey and, and, and Sanders, you don't need to play them in the same position. But it's beautiful to see Harry Cooksey come in, play that position as if Sanders is, you know, is is, is in front of us. Uh, and he played that position all last season for uh, for Hartley Whitney at step three, and he played that position for Farnborough at step two. You know, and, and professionally in in Austria and in in, uh, in America, he's traditionally been an attacking midfielder, and you can see that with his little touches, clever use of the space. And that's why it's been so such a pleasure watching him in that deep role because he can move, he can play with both feet. He's a joy to watch. Um, but yeah, you, you might be right. Maybe we've been wasting him. But we've had a plethora of, uh, of attacking talent we've had to make use of, and, and just getting him in the team in that six has been so important. But in the predicament we find ourselves in because of injuries, you know, perfect. And he's making a charge for Golden Boot. He's only two back. And well, Owen Dean taking the penalty won't help his cause though. But. Um... I don't know how much you want to talk about next season, but the players we just mentioned there, Cooksley and Sanders and obviously uh, Ryan Killane as well, that's very much going to be the basis of what you're looking to build from, isn't it, for step four? Yeah, look, it, uh, Jono has a very clear idea about what he wants to build. Um, very similar to this time last season, we were talking about what what's the core of the players. Or, or the, you know, First of all, we identify the system and what players would be in the ideal system. Daryl was a key part of that if we wanted to play the box. Um, Cooksey was a part of that. Ryan was a part of that. Uh, Jack Dean, where we you know, we knew we'd, we'd sacrifice a lot of width against most non-league teams. We'd play a 4-3-3, very similar to how we see it tonight, um, with, with the box and the very sort of uh, condensed formation that we play. So we needed width with uh, really, really talented fullbacks who can go up and down all day. So someone like Jack Dean was really, really important. And then we need goal scorers up front, and, and we've, we've, you know, we've got an embarrassment of riches, really, in terms of goal scorers. Um, and, and I'm sure we'll see most of them, if not all of them, come off the bench as well um, this evening. So, yeah, those are, those are three key players. It's, it's very clear you know, that we're in, incredibly lucky to have players like Ryan Kinane um, and he's he's been excellent this season he's played every single minute of every league game and we've conceded 12 goals and uh, and you know that's that doesn't happen by chance we've had six six clean sheets on the trot 
and uh, you know we score lots of goals at the other end, but it's all about keeping them out, and that allows you to win games one nil. And, and you know that Collierswood game, for for instance, you only win that game because you keep clean sheet at one end, and it allows your forward players, in that instance Harry Cooksey, to go forward and score your goal and win the game. We've kind of been crying out for a striker to start scoring goals regularly. There's obviously three players out there that have been candidates to do that, and have just dropped off in terms of goal scoring form. Obviously, their play has still been good, but Owen Dean now has stepped up and scored four in two. Obviously, two penalties in there, but it's great to finally have someone that's just banging in goals for fun. Yeah, I mean, he's, he looks confident, doesn't he? He looks confident. I think the, the great thing about Owen is he's fearless. He's fearless with the ball at his feet, and he's always been that. Even when he was off goal-scoring form, he felt like when he had the ball at his feet, he can make something happen by driving at the defence. And... Um, I think he's been given this like number number nine role in the in the absence of form, if we're honest, from from all the forward players. You know, Owen's been given the chance alongside Flatty, who who hasn't had a chance either really. Um, with uh, Shams and, and Lids probably been the, the the number one partnership at the start of the season. Flatty's also played and Owen, to be fair, have, have played a lot in that sort of ten role alongside Daz. Um, but we're seeing a partnership that was so successful for Farnham Town at the back end of last season, and we know it can tear up step fire defences and it's doing it you know back to back games 4-0 against Croydon all goals coming from that pair and uh, and a goal tonight for, for Owen Dean as well so you know good to see um, and uh, you know we, we're old school football fans we like to see a forward taking uh, taking penalties as well and, and he did that one with a huge amount of confidence We touched briefly on the marker Roman before the game because I think it, the writing was almost on the wall for him when Mark Waters came in and then took the shirt off him in terms of starting Yep Injuries have, have happened and Harry Cooksey's moved out of position, but now that Karoma's come back in, what can you say about his professionalism that he's come back in and played as well as he has in this kind of new system or new personnel system that Farnham have got? Well, first and foremost, I want to say everybody in the squad has, has done incredibly well um, to stay a part of a team culture. And, and you can only win a league based on a team coming together and, and doing it as a squad. And we've got a very, very competitive squad, and, a, and a, you know everyone deserves to start and would start for every other team in the league, right? So, first and foremost, there's been players that have, that have been incredibly impactful for us off the bench, and Lamar hasn't. He's he's played like 90% of the minutes for for us, and um, and it's been really, really good. And I can see it was disappointing for him to to be dropped for I think it was the Camberley game away, where Mark came in and he played so well off the bench against Jersey here at home. And it, and it felt natural that he was going to come in and, and kind of take that spot. But to be fair to Lamar, he's come back in. Obviously, cooksey has been pushed forward, giving him the opportunity. And it's like that bad form, that patch of bad form has just completely gone out the window. He's relaxed back into his position. He's got another really good leader next to him in Mark Waters. And I think the last two performances, Lamar's been excellent. There's the little situations that were, that were forming outside the penalty area here, here tonight. And Lamar's just got a toe in, got the ball away, and then Farnham can clear their lines about a real... You know, moment of danger um, going too close to Pat Nash's goal. So you know, I think, you know, as a as a collective, Farnham have been really good as a squad. But yeah, Lamar in particular, I think, has um, seized his opportunity when he needed to, and he had it at the start of the season as well. Because when Joe Jackson came in, it looked like it was going to be exactly the same situation, and Joe took that that spot twice in in two games, and then Lamar came back into it and played brilliantly. So yeah, I have to give a huge amount of credit to him. Yeah, and I think it's been a theme this season. Every time a player has dropped to the bench for a few weeks, we've seen it with Dean Rule earlier in the season. We saw it with Lewis Flatman for a while. We're seeing it with a few players on the bench tonight. And, you know, Shamal Edwards, Adam Little, Charlie Postance, Kai Tanner back from suspension. And I'm sure if the opportunity comes for them, they'll be fit and ready to go to sort of come back in and hit the ground running again. Yeah, I think we've got such strength in depth. And weirdly, all our strength in depth is in the forward areas, which is one of the reasons we had to play four forwards, because... Look at the bench tonight, it's three forwards and a number 10. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and, and Kai could play anywhere. You know, Kai could come on and play left back and I think he'd be excellent. He, he's played in the eight, he's played in the six, he's played in the 10, he's played in the 11, the seven, the nine. Like, Kai is, is, is totally um, flexible. And then, yeah, you've got, you've got, you know, you've got properly three number nines. And, uh, and that gives, gives Jono such a, one, a selection headache at the start but also um, gives him a huge amount of opportunity to change games off the yeah. bench. And that is that is a, a very fortunate position to be in versus other teams in this league. And I've, I look at Red Hill's bench, yeah, it's good. It's good because they're in the playoffs, right? And you need a good squad to get into the playoffs. But the difference is we've got, you know, Shams, one that, you know, it, it, it was on form to be the top goal scorer in the league last season. Charlie Possence was the top goal scorer last season for Abbey Rangers. 
Um, Adam Little speaks for itself, and Kai just come out of Sutton's academy. So, you know, really, really good bench, and um, I expect the the game to be changed um, with some substitutions quite early because of this two-goal lead. Yeah, and let's. We've been obviously waxing lyrical about the team and the squad throughout this halftime break. We should touch on losing the winning streak. Yep. The, the unbeaten streak is still alive, but we could obviously hark on about the negatives of that. But how impressed have you been with the reaction? I mean, 4-0 against Croydon, and now obviously tonight everything can change in the second half, but 2-0 at halftime against another playoff team. It's quite the reaction to that disappointment. Yeah, and look, it, it would have definitely hit the boys hard that to, to not be able to go the whole season. I think... If you'd have asked us uh, five games before, they would have all gone, yeah, it's probably not going to last the whole season. But when you get to 25, you start to believe, and, and therefore it hurts. But, you know, I have to give credit to Napil. You know, the circumstances meant that it was a different sort of game, but it was a, it was a very hotly, contis- uh, and hotly uh, contested game, and, uh, and, it was, and it was probably a 1-0 either way, 0-0 game. The last two games have been the epitome of what you'd want for, as a manager to bounce back from negative. And I think we saw it exactly the same when we went out the Vars, which was another you know, huge blow this season. Um, and we came here on a Tuesday, played Spellthorn, and we weren't great, but we got the job done. In, in not beautiful circumstances, but we got the job done. I thought we were excellent the last 10 minutes to make it happen. And, um, and those bounce back moments are what define your season because ultimately, if you look across the league, those are the moments where lots of teams in the playoff hunt haven't been able to just pick themselves up and go again. And that's why they've gone on a couple of losing game streaks. And that's what you know hinders you from being able to, to go from the title. So you know I, I'm, I'm really pleased to see hit the boys um, do well and get out the blocks early because that's something that we were so good at at the start of the season, scoring these early goals and putting the team on the back foot. And actually, you know, really in the last sort of 10 weeks, we've we've laboured our chances. We've not taken them or we haven't created enough in the first half to, to go ahead. And um, and that meant that, that it's gone down to the last sort of 10, 15 minutes in order for us to win. And we've managed to do it. But, yeah, it's been a different kind of performance the last two games. It's good to see us back in that rich vein of form. What, what, I mean, what have you made of it? You've seen us since the turn of the year. You know, this is... Probably the best two performances you've seen, bar Kingstonian in the cup, maybe? Yeah, Croydon was very good. Probably the best football I've seen um, post Sanders injury. Uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, having. The Red Hill away performance was very good. Yeah, that, that Daryl was in the team. I, th- I think it's very, um, very difficult to avoid the fact that since Sanders was out it was it was difficult to stumble across or, or work to find the system to replace him but Harry Cooksley has obviously been that man I think I was as impressed with the performance at Nat Hill as, as any other because it's a very different type of challenge when you go down to 10 men that early against second in the league to keep your heads and to grind out that point in the end and of course it's two points dropped if you want to look at it that way but to grind it out and to stick together and work as hard as they did I think that was a very Admirable performance. It reminded me of Liverpool against Tottenham when they played with ten men for most of the game earlier in the season and they stuck together. It's 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 a it's a winning mentality. Yeah, they didn't they didn't you know Adam Middle had the chance, could have nicked it, but yeah, this this last game and a half I think has been like you say a, a return to the Farnham from before I started coming in and doing the commentary. Um, but it has been a joy to watch, and I think yeah, the Harry Cooksleys, the Dean Rules, the Owen Deans, Lewis Flatmans are all in good form, and that. <laughs> that makes this one of the best places to come and watch football in non-league. In, in fact, that's another good player that we definitely need to highlight, Dean Rule. Another player who, when you came in, was in terrible form. Didn't look like he even wanted to be out on the pitch. He, was, he just wasn't confident on the ball. And now he looks like a different player. Yeah. Looks like the player that started the season in that position next to Daz. He's drifting past players. You know, he's, he's playing the sort of the, almost the eight in that um, in that attacking midfield with allowing Cooksey to go and play the Daz role, which is kind of that free role. Dean's kind of dropping in as the eight um, alongside Waters and, and Lamar and, uh, and and he's doing a brilliant job and he looks dangerous when he goes forward too. He runs beyond the strikers really well. Yeah, he's, he's probably one of the Farnham attacking players that can have the most influence on the game without scoring or assisting, um, which which is you know, a huge compliment considering the, the, the sort of attacking prowess the around him as he uh, converses with Lewis Flatman who would love to get on the score sheet himself tonight. He would. He would. Big game on Saturday to think about. You know, obviously it's a, a, a long journey to Jersey, longer than you're used to in this league. I wonder if legs might be saved at some point. 
yeah, they will be. Uh, it's 4G as well, um, so tough work. But also, must, must be said, the ramifications of this game. If Farnham win tonight, they can win the league away at Jersey on Saturday. It requires some help. It requires Ballum to take some points off Nap Hill. It requires Tadley to drop points this week and Farnham to win in Jersey. But they can win it. If they don't, then Farnham have a chance to win the league here on Tuesday against Tooting and Mitchell. It's all getting very exciting, this running. But Farnham looking to uh, get the job done in terms of winning the league as early as possible. It would be an impressive feat for us to, to do it with only 29 games clocked. And then there are all sorts of milestones and records to chase. It's been a year of milestones and records. It's been a year of milestones and records. And this ref's looking for worst performance of the season out there tonight. Yeah, that's some competition. Cooksley got there first and was fouled. And straight away, we're get, <laughs> going to see some frustration aimed at the referee from one of the teams. I mean, we can't complain about that one. He's done well to avoid the, uh, the contact there, Cooksley. It was a very late tackle. So Farnham starting the second half as they ended the first on top and sending bodies forward for a set piece. There's a lot of men out there that would love to get in on the act. There's only two players in the squad who haven't scored a goal outside of Pat Nash. Tom Smith, Max Meaton, both are on the field tonight. I thought Max Meaton could have scored earlier. He could. Put the ball in across, it was unselfish, but he could have struck it. Tom Smith also drove forward in the first half and, again, could have potentially taken a shot, opted to pass. Lewis Flatman will deliver. Waters was looking to flick it on. That's a Farnham corner. That's a good throw from Lewis Flatman. Plenty of Farnham corners tonight. And Harry Cooksley's delivery, for the most part, has been on point. With a goal and a penalty win to his name already. That was over the bar, and this time the referee's given a goal kick. Waters was close to it, but it clearly went off the Red Hill defender's head. Uh, he's, a, he's funny, this referee. I think it's a bad injury. Calling for that is that is that, it might be the worst decision I've ever seen. It was so obviously a Red Hill player, but bad injury apparently. Yeah, he looks a bit uh, lost out there, does the referee? Bless him. That's because he's come recently from a mod rock concert <laughs> playing bass guitar. <laughs> He's not a qualified referee. He is a bassist for a band I reckon are called Mood Swing. Yeah, yeah he's got a wry smile on his face. It's good to see. <laughs> I'm glad he's enjoying his performance. <laughs> and he might be forced into an early change in the second half, Red Hill. And enforced changes, not the best recipe for a route back into the game, but you never know. The replacement is being readied. Not sure what happened to the stricken man. But we await the resumption. When he comes on, tell him who he's doing. Well, whilst we've got you uh, in this lovely break, 350 of you are watching along tonight. Please do subscribe. It makes a massive difference to our non-league club, massive community we're trying to build on YouTube. Uh, we're currently number four most subscribed non-league club on YouTube. Let's make that number three. 
we've got a bit of a go, way to go, but every little helps and we produce content every single week. We have podcasts with players. We have a non-league diary series, which is like a behind-the-scenes documentary. It's released every Friday. We do live streams of every midweek game home and away, live and for free on YouTube. And highlights go on YouTube of the game 12 hours after the full-time whistle is blown here. Oh, perfectly timed for a little promo. Good job. Jackson got up. And uh, the rain is starting to fall a little bit. Poplet's come back on. AG! AG! Another one of those awkward back passes, but well dealt with. And that was awkward as well for Kenane in that part of the pitch that is the most difficult to control the ball in. Kenane with more defending to do. Sutherland lets it go out for a throw. Red Hill just looking for a foothold of some description. There is going to be a change. We thought Poplet might have continued. I think both benches making fun of the referee. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the best. Always the best when everybody knows they've they've uh, they're watching a comedy display out there. But Adam Grant is on. Good player, Adam Grant. I think he caused us some issues in the first half of the away fixture. He did. Had the best chance of the game for Red Hill that day. Could have been very different. Tom Smith. Concedes the corner, did well, not to allow Sutherland in behind. Good to have Michael Oliver back on the tannoy tonight after his exploits in California. They take it short. Forward with the delivery. Where's the ball? And Pat Nash came away with it. God knows how. Yeah, it could have gone anywhere. Yeah. As the mist begins to fall here at Farnham. Yeah. Just when you think spring's arrived. Karoma. Kane will go long. Flatman. Wasn't going to get that. Not his finest. Yeah, he's shaking his head. There's a few from Canaan tonight that have gone a bit astray. Yeah, it's not been his finest passing display. I think he's been rock solid at the back, as he always is, but passing-wise, he's not been brilliant. Number 19, who's that? Adam Grant. He's going to hold him. Play hold him a few. Played right wing, didn't he, against us? And... <laughs> Jackson gets it away, it might come for Owen Dean. Wins the header and Cooksley's in the area. Just couldn't quite control with his studs. Yeah, he's better with the uh, outside of his boot. Or his shoulder. <laughs> and that's well worked and can Redhill make something of it? There's, again, probably better options with Sutherland hugging the right touch line. But it goes to waste. It's a difficult night for them from an attacking perspective. Dean Rule's been caught out there, though. Maintains possession, flicked on by Cooksley. Red Hill have got men forward here, if they can get the ball quickly. It's aimed at Sutherland. Smith got a touch on it. Kane made sure. And Karoma pulling the shirt there of Duncan, who comes away with it. And again, the final ball from Red Hill, just rather aimless. That would be the frustration from their Great point kick. of view. And we'll take that from where they were. One there by Waters. And it's going to come for Cooksley. And Lewis Flatman, still an opportunity. Flatman shoots, it was a decent strike. 
Yeah. It was a good strike. He made a run to the left, again, just dragging the defender with him to create the space. The better chance was if Flatty could have taken a better touch. Final winning the ball up high again. Kinane didn't get enough on that. Smith spared Farnham's blushes. Here's Cooksey. Brought down by Saunders. And that was an easy one for even this referee. Adam Little, the change. The Marco Roma is going to make way. I think that'll be as much to save legs, the Marco Roma. I think he's been excellent in that. He receives an applause. And just, Little will be desperate for a goal tonight. And just when Red Hill thought that there was enough of an attacking threat on the pitch, Adam Little comes on. Yeah, not what a defensive unit wants to see. No. Dean Rule looking to get there. Waters, great touch and a chance now for Flatman. Cut out, just forced a bit wide there, Flatman. Really good touch by Waters initially. And a well-weighted pass. Final yeah, it corner. was, it was. Um, I feel like that was a, it was a better chance than maybe it ended up being. Not quite forcing the goalkeeper to make a save. Farnham beginning to win the ball up high though, which is promising. Flatman's floated delivery, again into the arms of Wynne Roberts. It's not quite come off the last couple of deliveries from Flatman from there. Wynne Roberts was looking long, and Meaton can just let that run through to Nash. Now it's Cooksley playing in his more familiar, at least as far as this season is concerned. We position. spent 10 minutes waxing lyrical about how good Harry Cooksley was in the 10. Within 10 minutes, he's in the eight again. Yeah, leave us wanting more. I'm sure we'll see him back up there before the end of the season. And Farnham will look to keep the ball there a bit more with Harry Cooksey. Clayne going along again. Owen Dean won it. Little won't quite be able to reach that one. It's a chance for Adam Little to get back into some form ahead of our trip to Jersey, as it will be for any other striker that comes off the bench. Yeah, you hear that Red Hill coaches, they don't want those long balls forward anywhere near Ryan Kinane. Good work there, and the shot is blocked by Jackson. Jackson's got a knack of being in the right place at the right time for those blocks. But Farnham need to switch on. Here's Grant. Too short there for Sutherland. Poor touch. Fatman, he's giving it away. Sutherland. Driving down the right flank. Dyson. Farnham can't afford to give Redhill a leg up here. They look wide. It's a really good searching ball. And Dean Rule almost went over. Did make the tackle and it's going to be a goal kick. And <laughs> <laughs> he's just realised the fellow on the far side. He's, the referee is spinning the wheel every time a decision needs to be made, and it's quite interesting to see where it lands. Yeah. A game of spin the wheel every think, sort of two to three minutes. I think any Farnham player was even appealing for that one. I can't believe he's given it. It was such an easy corner to give. <laughs> oh, dear me. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope he doesn't have any big decisions to make. I mean, He's given I, a penalty. That was the right decision. Yeah. I'm obviously talking from a Farnham perspective. That was a good touch by Flatman to keep the move alive. And then it went over. Another easy decision for the referee. Makes no mistake. Yeah, Redhill midfielders have made a few of those. There is a midfielder in there for Redhill. He's already on a yellow card. Just all feels very routine at the moment for Farnham. He could be about to give him a Simbin here. 
or at least a talking to, for Owen Fraser. <sighs> Dangerous game in this league. You know, talking back to the referee, get yourself down to 10 men for 10 minutes. Especially a referee that will want to reassert his authority. Might come for Waters. Sets it for Kinane. You know how he wants it out there. Cooksley, Smith. Cooksley again. Looks over the top for Smith. That will have too much on it. Ruben! Ruben! Still go on one! Benito! Still go on one! <laughs> you and nature! Edwards and Possant sent for a war up. Yeah. Two more men that would love to end their respective droughts. And droughts is definitely what you describe them as. I can't remember the last time both of them scored. Ryan Kane made That's that a great ball. It's into the path of Owen Dean and he gets his head on it. Owen Dean. He's a nuisance. He's a nuisance and he's a confident nuisance up there at the moment, Owen Dean. Four goals, as you said earlier, in two games. He's looking good. Yeah, he was one that needed a goal until that tap in on Saturday and then the floodgates opened. It's funny how cricket can turn. You just need one. Here's Kinane. Little. Waters. Looking for Little is a decent idea. They want handball, but they keep the ball momentarily, Redhill. Just not getting any change out of Farnham at the moment. No, they're not. Flatman looking for rule. Throw in, Dean Rule avoided that was good. giving it was away the foul. It was good from Lewis Flatman, put it into a really, really dangerous area, turn the Redhill defence. I think he's been much, much better at that in the last few games, it's making the right decisions. Waters. Coxley meets and makes it. Very <laughs> determined run. Meets Can't lose it there, to be though. careful. And uh, has Ryan Kinane for support. Ryan Kinane broading forward. Little. Smith. Dean oh, Rule. Caught late by Dyson. Another unnecessary one. And Dyson goes into the referee's book and he really enjoyed brandishing that one. Yeah, he did. Look at him. Look at him out there. He's my bassist. I'd build a band around him, I think. I'd get him in. That's the look I'm after. Some like really sort of mod rocky t-shirts. I'd, I'd, I'd follow him around the uh, the pubs of Fleet. Yes, Going to make another change. Red Hill. With Sam Orisotoki entering the fray. Is that one of the. Facing Peter book? Wedgworth. Is that one of the booked players? I don't think it is. That's why he was free. Lots of movement ahead of Ryan Kane. Steam really looks for. And it's collected by Rule. Cooksley. Brilliant. Dean Rule. Got his foot to it. Didn't quite come for Little. Ford. Again, it's just more hopeful than anything else. They've not been able to string together any passes in Farnham's half. Red Hill. That's what will frustrate them. Not really offered anything in this second half. 18 minutes into it. Tom Smith will try to keep that in. And in the end, happy to give away a throw deep in opposition territory. Did well there, Tom Smith. I have to say, did well. Would have been a wasted effort. 
but instead boxes Redhill in. But Farnham need to kill this game off. Can't leave it at 2-0. Yeah, as routine as it is now, that can all change quickly. And we know they've got the quality. Nash looking out wide. Perfect pass. Brilliant pass. Brilliant pass. Dean Rule, no flag. Good touch from Rule. Into the area. Can he find Owen Dean? He just cannot stop scoring. Farnham have three and the clock end has seen another Owen Dean goal. It's a phenomenal pass from Pat Nash. And gets out. Dean Rule beats his man. Finds a dangerous area and there's only one man it was ever going to be. Owen Dean at the moment. Five goals in two. He looks fantastic out there. I think he's probably about to get hooked. That would be a shame. I'm sure that will frustrate him after that goal. What a pass from Pat Nash. And what great play it was between Meaton and Rule as well. All round brilliant Farnham Town goal. Brilliant goal. And that does kill it off. You did just say they needed a third and it's come. And Owen Dean. It was a great finish as well. Was. Struck it well. Two weeks ago, he maybe misses that one. Skies it. <laughs> Into the flats behind, I think. It's another... Big, Farnham will want to send a message. Big home win on the cards. And as we said, quite the reaction to the first drop points of the campaign. It's not just any old teams they've done this to. As Dean Rule is absolutely purring. And he picks out Owen Dean. He'll want to get another chance as soon as possible if he is in line to be hooked. Tips that over the top towards Flatman. It was a really good idea. It was a really good idea. Worked the space. I thought he'd shoot. Yeah, would have been forgiven for doing so. Yeah, I think he's got minutes left in this game. I've just looked down, he's got seconds left in his game. <laughs> One by Kinane. Waters out towards Tom Smith. And that was not a clever tackle. On Tom Smith. And the referee... <laughs> Poor old ref, he doesn't need this on his night. He's going to his pocket, yellow, red. It's a second yellow, and Ben Dyson can have no complaints. And Joe Jackson got involved. No complaints from Dyson. He was always going to be coming in late on Tom Smith. And I don't think Joe Jackson was very happy with it, hence the shove from him. And Farnham won't want to come off this pitch with any injuries or suspensions. It was just, it was a dreadful tackle on it. He just didn't need to do it. He just didn't need to do it. Yeah, there have been moments in this game where it's threatened to spill over a little bit. Just frustration from Red Hill more than anything. Yeah, Ben Dyson deservedly going for an early shower. And, I mean, based on that, I wouldn't be shocked to see another one go. Red Hill losing their heads. And, and they can't afford this, this, by the way, Red Hill. They cannot afford to lose players at this stage in the season. It was brave from Smith to get his foot to it first. Because the challenge is always going to be coming in hard. Right in front of the dugout. It's very similar to the Jack Dean red card. Like, in front of the dugout, you're just never, ever, ever going to get away with it. Brilliant pass. Not when you're on a yellow. Flatman. Gets a good cross in, and they had to just head that out there. Owen Fraser underneath it. Fantastic, fantastic ball in from Lewis Flatman, who has worked incredibly hard up there. And again, Flatman and Dean have been a partnership that I'll enjoy watching over the course of the next few weeks as well, I'm sure. Tom Smith's going to come and take the corner. It's a relief he's OK, because another injury at fullback would have been disastrous yeah, for Farnham. No recognised fullbacks fit. No, yeah, they've had to get very creative. Might have seen Kaitana at left back. I'd have enjoyed it. I'd have enjoyed it. Kaitana is stripped and ready though. That's what we like to hear. I'm sure Postance and Edwards will be following suit shortly. 
Cooksley. Deflected cross. Kinane's there. He brings it down. Who does he think he is? Dean Rule. Yeah, right Kinesh. decision. Right decision. Finally needs a rebuild. Red Hill, 3 0 down, and they've got nine men behind the ball. Yeah, and they will want this 21 remaining minutes to go as quickly as possible, I'm sure. No route back into the game. He's especially onside. If Adam He's... Little can Ooh. make this count. He bent his run, but just not enough. It looked like a really clever run. It was a lovely pass, quickly done by Owen Dean. I thought he was going to be on the side there. Shamal Edwards, Charlie Postance, and Kai Tanner all coming on. And they've got 20 minutes to make an impression. Lewis Fatman deservedly getting a clap off. I think he was fantastic again today. Didn't quite get his goal, but another brilliant performance. Dean Brawl, another great performance from him. And Owen Dean is making his way over. Yeah. Yeah, Owen Dean won't be getting another hat trick, but five goals now in two games for Farnham's number seven, and the smile on his face tells you all you need to know about how he's feeling. Will Michael Oliver announce that one? I'll see. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> so, uh, new look front four. Exciting. Yeah, they'll get chances against ten men. No excuses not to get chances. I'm sure Red Hill will look to keep this as low a score as possible. They'll just sit and avoid humiliation. Red Hill will want to get around the M25 as fast as physically possible. I yeah, don't think they'll be sticking around for any pizza. But, yeah, front, front four change. Kai Tanner back from suspension. Feels like the longest suspension of all time. Look at the bubble. Over the sandpit. New boots as well for Kai Tanner. He bought them the day after he got suspended. That's hit my car. <laughs> the clock ender demanding more. They want a goal fest in this next 18 or 19 minutes. It's been another very good midfield display from Waters. It's really settled into this Farnham team. Kinane looking for Postance. Cut out there. Edwards getting a touch on it. Hopeful ball forward. That's what they've been reduced to. Red Hill, Farnham have been excellent. Yeah, poor old Nathan Hogan's had very little in the way of service. Waters. Tom Smith's got a spring in his step. Wins the throw. Much better from Tom Smith. I think he's been much more positive this evening. Look to take that, that first touch forward rather than just cutting back and giving it back to Kinane. I think he's been really, really good. He needed a performance like this. Yeah, and with Brandon Kalu being sidelined, Smith has probably got a good shot at plenty of minutes in the coming weeks as Farnham close out this surely title-winning campaign. Kai Tanner getting involved, losing out. And Hogan. Oh, what a great tackle that is from Joe Jackson. Not only a great podcaster, but a decent centre-back too. Another foul, this time on Cooksley. Move the ball. Taken quickly, Farnham want to score more goals at the clock end. Here's another man who won a goal. He's actually... ...brought down, another foul, and I wonder who's going to take this one. Harry Cooksey. Well, I'd be shocked if it's not. <laughs> Another change coming. Twenty and eleven. Yeah, Alex Keating and Gavin Quintine. 
not the situation you want to be brought on in. No. No. Adam Little stood around this, as is Tom Smith. I mean, Tom Smith, you know, you mentioned him, he's not scored this season. He scored a banger at Shearwater away last season. It's not what you'd call a left footer's, you know, typical angle. Looks like it's going to be Adam Little. A man who needs a goal. I'm happy, I'm happy about him taking it, to be honest. I just want to see him get on target. They want to make the changes before the free kick. Ethan Ford limps off. And uh, Jack Saunders make way. Probably happy enough to uh, come off the pitch, I'd have thought. Yes. In that kind of performance. It is Adam Liddell. It's off the bar and Edwards contended and Waters was offside and somehow both strikers that need a goal, Liddell and Edwards, have missed. Well, I can't believe what I've just watched. I'm about to watch it again in front was, of me. It was bad luck for Liddell and Edwards. It just bounced up too quickly for him to react. Again, an informed striker probably buries it. But harsh luck on Adam Liddell. Brilliant strike from Adam Liddell. Brilliant strike. Yeah, not that known for his set pieces, but... Well, I don't know that. It's just we've had so many good set piece takers. He's not needed to. Maybe he's good at them. Good. Although, yet to get a shot on target from one. Good turn there by Sutherland. Edwards got back in to help out. Here's Grant. And now Hogan. Easy for Jackson to deal with. And now a transition opportunity. Patient, though, from Tanner. Yeah, Tanner playing the, uh, the free role in that. Jackson looking for Meaton. Just going to skid away from the Farnham defender. Now it's Keating looking to make an impression himself in this difficult circumstance. There's just no men forward in the central area for Red Hill. Smith. Brian Kinane. Joe Jackson. Again, plenty of movement ahead of him. Keeps going. And they still have it here, Farnham, on the edge of the box. Ooh, That's Charles a good here. turn by... Charlie Grant. Poston's getting back into the right-back area. Working hard. And it's another ball forward that's just going to go straight through to Pat Nash. It's, I feel like I've seen that exact pass 20 times. Sutherland's header. And now Tanner's. It's going to be a throw to Farnham. Apologies if you heard some fruitful language there. I think, I think Frucy's underplaying it. <laughs> Wasn't best pleased with his colleague's work rate. No. I think would be how I summarise his words. I don't, I don't think Red Hill are best pleased with absolutely anything that's occurred tonight. And off the back of a poor result last time out, it's, just, it's not what they needed. Sutherland not giving up, but another ball that's not found its mark. Little. Joe Jackson. Redhill left back there. Look for what it looks like. They're going man for man here, Redhill. It's Waters. causing a problem. It's opened up for Mark Waters. Just couldn't get hold of his shot. Harry Hugo frustrated by that one. We all thought that was Waters' moment. I did, I did, he did so well. There was a massive gap appearing in front of him. He just needed to get the strike, you know, similar to, to Carrie Cooksey in the first half, how he scored his goal. Just, just struck it well. Low, skipped across the surface. Waters couldn't quite get hold of it. Boris Atoki. Another one that's going to run out. About 11 minutes to go 
at the memorial ground. I think Farnham would be pretty disappointed if they don't make this four. It is their favourite score, like. Factually, statistically. Kai Tanner's got a huge amount of space if someone can find him. Yeah, Red Hill are basically going man for man here. With one less man. I'm no mathematician, but that'll be hard. Tanner, his first action for about a month. And he's fouled by Quintine. Canane. Joe Jackson has not stopped running all night. Yeah, neither has Mark Waters. Those two have been excellent. This is where Farnham have had a man over. And it's Max Meaton who's the man over. Decent delivery. Just cut out. There were plenty waiting for it. That's what Postance all want. Stood up towards the back stick. Edwards to Meaton again. Jackson might opt to cross. Instead, he looks for Edwards. And the flag stays up. down on Shamal Edwards across the six-yard box. It's going to go out for a throw in the end. That was a decent opening there for Edwards. Normally one of his best skills from Arlen was just standing it up. That's what Postance wants in there. Jackson, Edwards points to where he wants it. Jackson on a, on a real dribbling spree. And it came for Tanner. It was audacious and couldn't quite get the right contact on it. And he's been heckled from the Farnham bench. Hey! <laughs> Sums it all up. Joe Jackson has been our most attacking threat in the last two minutes. He looks so confident with the ball at his feet. That is one of the positives if you're dominating a game of having a centre midfielder at centre back. And also the luxury that Ryan Canane gives you. Max Meaton heads it on. Postance will give chase and commit the foul. Let's see it. Foul of a frustrated striker. One who wants just a chance to get back among the goals. Well, I've enjoyed this evening. Yes. I have to say, I've enjoyed it. A similar feeling to how I enjoyed Saturday afternoon. And uh, thank you very much for watching along. And if you're watching along and coming to Jersey on Saturday, it should be a firecracker. Farnham Town if you haven't already heard, can win the league with a win in Jersey, but they need some help from some friends across the league to take points off Tadley and Naphill. But it's possible. And Farnham have really found some form these last couple of games. They're looking for another 4 0. Mark Waters, the driving force in this attack. Now Little on the left-hand side. Adam Little cutting inside. Shoot. He does shoot. Tom Smith. And now Meaton. Waters. Edwards again points to where he wants it. But instead, Waters looks for Postance. <laughs> Postance just signalling to Waters there. He wanted it in the air. Here's Sutherland. Done really well there, Tyree Sutherland. He's their danger man Red, for Red Hill, but he hasn't been able to make anything happen this evening. Yeah, it's been a tall order for him. <laughs> Management team below us are desperate for more goals. Farnham playing more of a 4-3-3 now. Cooksey basically playing as the quarterback in between the centre halves. Joe Jackson. Ryan Canane. Charlie Postance gets it to feet. Patient play now from the hosts. Final just being very patient, waiting for that opening. They've got the man advantage. Canane. Ryan Canane, the 
creator. Here's Edwards. And he gets another cross in across the six yard box and that does go out for a corner. And the usual suspects will go forward, even though it is 3-0 or five minutes to go. Yeah, they are desperate, desperate for this to be four. And I think it's deserved to be four. I think, I think we haven't really forced a goalkeeper to many saves in the second half. We killed the game off when we needed to, but it's been a, such a comfortable performance against a very good Redhill side. Yeah, they've made Redhill look ordinary, which they definitely are not at this level. Kaitana. The two Farnham stalwarts there, Max Meaton and Tom Smith. Smith looking for Cooksley. Just misjudged it. I feel like Reddit have made eight subs. Uh, this will be their fifth. As uh, Harlan Goddard is going to get five minutes. Again, probably won't be the most memorable five minutes of this season. Waters' header actually comes for Harlan Goddard. He's involved straight away. But he's dispossessed and Cooksley looking for Postance. It was a heavy pass, really. He was relying on Possence's ball control with his feet there. Yeah, it was, it was a tough one to control, especially for an out-of-form goal scorer. Mike Walters called for it early and won it. Tanner. And now Jackson. He's never looked in doubt in this second half, really. It needed that Owen Dean goal just to clinch it, but it's never looked likely, really, had it. <laughs> Referee. It's one of his best performances so far. He's having a shocker in there. Off we go. Yeah. But, you know, the penalty and the red card, he got absolutely Yeah, he on. did, to be fair. The big, the big decisions have actually impacted the game. He's made, he's made the right ones. Um, he's made some mind-numbingly bizarre decisions uh, apart from that, but the big ones he's got right. Joe Jackson looking for the run of Waters. He's Waters is desperate for a goal. He is desperate for a goal. I'm sure he'll be in the starting 11 on Saturday. Can't imagine there'll be many, if any, changes for the trip to Jersey. But we'll leave that up to Paul Johnson. Yeah, I don't think we'll get involved. Not sure he'll ask for our opinion. 27 wins or a possible 28 games played. Our input is not required. Ryan Kinane. Yeah. Another misplaced pass from Kinane. Yeah, I'm not sure that was his fault. That was a miscommunication between Postance and, and Little. Little. Strong there. Colin Goddard. Red Hill pleading for that decision to go their way. Just a couple of minutes remain. And for a team losing, Red Hill are in no rush. Down the line for Keating. Fraser. Duncan, who's dropped deeper since the red card. Canane heads away. And Edwards can collect, and he looks straight for Postance, who holds it up. And he's looking for the pace of Edwards. Ooh, it's a great tackle, that. It's a great tackle because he was inches away from getting past him there, Shams. It was a clever pass from the outside the boot of Charlie Postance. 
Farnham broke away with lightning pace. Edwards thinks it's a Farnham throw. The referee thinks it's a, a Red Hill goal kick. Quite the difference of opinion. Yeah, I think I think the referee. Oh, might be, might be, yeah, I think the referee is right. It might be offside. No, it's a goal kick. You never know. Never know with this ref. As I said, spin the wheel. See what you get. Five he's minutes. He's signalled. Five minutes, which feels excessive for a game in this situation, but that will hopefully for Farnham allow time for one more opportunity or two. Edwards backing into his man. Cooksley picks it up. Smith, little waits for it. Joe Jackson, has he got one more of those runs in him? I think Farnham, are, from a defensive point of view, are happy with a 3-0. From an attacking point of view, desperate for more goals. Adam Little, he, he being probably the main protagonist of that hunt for a fourth. Cooksley, Little wanted it played forward quicker. Cooksley, Kinane and Jackson in no real hurry. Jackson does now stride forward. Postance will want this on his head. It's in towards Postance, head of the way before it gets to him. Neaton again. And now Waters. Jackson. Can he deliver? Oh, I feel he'd gone down. Jackson. Cuts inside and shoots with his left. It's going to come for Postance and Edwards. Where? I and mean, honestly. Them, they cannot turn it home. That might have been the chance they needed. I mean, Joe Jackson's passed it back to the goalkeeper and somehow it's it's not ended up in his in his arms. Postance and Edwards. Can't react quick enough. What a chance. That was the chance. Glad we're not chasing a goal, that's for sure, because that would have been infuriating to watch. Infuriating. But that is two out of form strikers in the six yard. Still three and a half minutes, though. And Liddell is going to want to orchestrate another chance. And he turns away there from a tired Owen Fraser. Adam Liddell. Oh, he's gone over his own feet. Tried too hard. Should have played the pass earlier, Adam Liddell. It's the pace there. There for all to see. But Joe Jackson has been he's imperious. Been, he's been majestic back there, Joe Jackson. Both at the back end going forward. He's not let a single player go past him. It's another very versatile individual. Harry Cooksey being another. So many players that can occupy different roles. <laughs> Both teams are just begging for the referee to put call an end to this. You say that? Charlie Possum's from up to my Oh, no, the, the, <laughs> the front three of Farnham Town are desperate for this game to go on for another 90 minutes. The rest of the players want to go in and have some Domino's pizza. And, for, and Red Hills team want to forget about this and move on to Saturday. Canane. That was a poor pass. Smith. And Cooksley really is playing quarterback. Kai Tanner drifts into space. Max Meaton's always the man over. That's who Tanner was looking for. Take it quickly. And there might be a chance. The tempo, as you can see, has dropped off a cliff. Yeah. Because these boys at the back have dictated it and they're quite happy with the clean sheet. The seventh in a row, if we manage to get to yeah, it. It's a real performance of a team that knows they're going to be champions very soon. That's a good ball, though, by Cooksley. Max Meaton's in! And he's in the post! Edwards! They just won't fall for him. Tanner goes in. Charlie Poston's might have a chance. Tanner. Waters. Edward. <laughs> Every single Farnham player that needs a goal could have scored in that 10 second passage. And somehow none of them have. And none of us can believe it. 
<laughs> that was mad. That was mad. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> it's the worst striking display <laughs> from a team that scored 140 goals this season. I've never seen quite something like it. There were five moments there I was ready to raise my voice. <laughs> Just never came. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. Postance was there. <laughs> Catch it! Oh no. Oh dear. Deary me. Goodness me. Max still Meaton, recovering. Max Meaton could have really raised the roof there. He Rattled struck the it so well. Oh, what a ball from Cooksley as well. Dear me. We said there'd be one or two chances left. We didn't expect <laughs> it to be in five second intervals. <laughs> Oh, God. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. You can't say it's not entertaining here at Farnham Town. And the referee brings to an end a very routine win for Farnham Town. They've played superbly. Owen Dean adds two more goals to his hat-trick on Saturday. Harry Cooks has opened the scoring. It finishes here. Farnham Town 3, Red Hill 0.